So what I'm doing here is just taking the outer bolt off of my swivel wheel so that I can mark where my holes need to be for my spacers. I'm also marking that this spacer is for the right side even though the left spacer should be identical to the right side but it's sometimes extremely difficult to make your holes exactly the same so it's just a good common practice to get into just in case your holes aren't the same. Alright so now that the two hex bolts are off I can just simply place that spacer over those holes and just mark underneath with the permanent marker where the holes need to be and just go ahead and drill those out. So I'm not going to show you that here but that's basically all I did. Alright so this is what one completed side is going to look like as far as what we're trying to accomplish next. So now I'm just going to show you how to actually get to this on the right side. All right, so as you can see, I have the holes drilled into my right spacer. And next, what I need to do is just see how far on the end of the spacer I need to overlap it so that I could actually drill in two hex bolts and properly secure that spacer to that elongated piece. So I decided to give it about a two inch gap. And again, that would give me enough room to place two hex bolts there. So I use some heavy duty spring clamps just to hold those two pieces together and I highly recommend these they are easy to attach and detach when you just need to hold something together for a quick second. Alright so again I'm just marking where I need to drill my holes. Alright so in a moment I'm finna use Google SketchUp to show you my approach for spacing out the hex bolts as far as the measurements or the dimensions. As I use this approach throughout the project and I'm trying to prevent from having to repeat a lot of the same information. Now this is just a look of how it would look if the bolts was already in place so that spring clamp does come in handy. Alright so referring back to Google SketchUp as you can see here I have a new object and that object is a table and the reason I created that table is it's sometimes quite difficult to refer to this completed uh, lawnmower project and get an actual dimensions or spacing of some hex bolts for example because I'm dealing with so many angles sometimes it was quite difficult to get everything exact so what I did and what I may be doing from time to time within the video is just referring to some pieces that I create such as these two pieces um, where you can find the exact spacing and the dimensions for different components so again, referring back to what I just showed you in a video, I had that two inch gap, which I'm showing you here. And within that gap, I could place two hex bolts or I could drill out two holes for those hex bolts. And as you can see here with this dimension and tool, I'm just showing you that uh, this hole is three fourths of an inch from this edge of this angle piece. And from the edge, it's one half of an inch. And same here you can use the dimension tool if you wanted to to show that this is one half of an inch from this line here so it should be self-explanatory now hopefully this helps with anyone who may get confused and again this flat aluminum piece would just simply slide over that piece just like so so i, I take this approach with many of the uh, uh pieces that overlap each other so that's the reason i'm taking the extra time and effort to actually show you this again so i don't have to repeat this information so this is the next piece we're going to make again you can see I, I, that I've spaced in those hex bolts just the same as I did before and this piece is just allowing me to extend this elongated piece or that elongated arm piece as I saw that I needed room for batteries and extra components and things like that so that's what I'm doing here. So again, I'm just overlapping the arm piece with this piece that I'm now creating by two inches. Again, just giving me enough room to place two hex bolts there. So what I'm doing now is just marking my two pieces to indicate that they are for the right side. 
And then next, what I'm gonna do is just mark where I need to drill my holes. Now, as far as drilling my holes, what I'm gonna do is drill my holes through this top elongated angle piece first. And then once those holes are drilled out, I can easily just place my extended angle piece underneath that and mark where the holes need to be. Now, I'm gonna show you what I mean in Google SketchUp in a second. All right, so let's imagine for a second that this piece over here to the right is the elongated angle piece of aluminum. And this piece over here to the left is that extended angle piece of aluminum. And as you remember from the video, I marked two blue dots with my permanent magic marker. Let's imagine for a second that I already drilled out those holes. So once I drill out those holes, I can just simply take this and place it right back over that extended piece. And as you can see here, since my holes are dripped on this top layer, it exposes the layer that's right below it. So I can just simply take a magic marker and mark in between these. And as soon as I'm done doing that, I can move this piece on top. Let's move that out of the way. And again, using your imagination, you know that two blue dots will be right here. So then I can just simply take this elongated or this extended piece, I'm sorry, and go ahead and drill out those two holes. So that's my method that I use throughout the video certain times when I'm actually trying to drill holes on layers and I'm trying to make sure those holes are even and that each piece is going to line up evenly so that's what's going on here and hopefully this does make sense all right so something to quickly note here as you're drilling your holes through your different aluminum pieces you definitely want to make sure it is secure properly or it can swing back at you as you just saw in the video so basically all those pieces that I just marked all my holes on, such as the spacer, the elongated angle piece, I'm just drilling out each one of those holes now. Alright, so once all my holes are drilled in my spacer and my elongated angle piece, I'm just screwing everything in place with some hex bolts and stop nuts again. So everything here should be very self-explanatory. So now I'm gonna attach my extended angle piece of aluminum. And again, I took the approach as far as drilling the holes and marking the holes that I just showed you in Google SketchUp. So that's my reason for showing you that since I didn't actually have any video footage of myself actually going through that process. So hopefully that makes sense and that's what's going on here. All right, so this is just an example of what two completed sides should look like. All right, so now I'm going to make the back end piece for the top layer of the frame. And you can refer to Google SketchUp for the dimensions. So in order to attach this piece that we just created, we're going to have to unscrew our hex bolts on the extended angle aluminum piece in order to mark our holes as you'll see in a second.
Now, as you're putting the spring clamps on, you just want to make sure that the flat piece of aluminum is flush with the back end of both angle aluminum pieces. And then we can easily just flip over the frame and just mark where our holes need to be. So once I saw that the hex bolts fit correctly, I could then reattach the extended piece. Alright, so something to quickly note, as you can see, I placed the extended piece on top of the other two layers, so that's very important. All right, so due to the cold temperature outside, I move my work inside, and here you can really start to see things coming together. All right, so I should also point out that these electric wheelchair motors aren't connected to the frame at all. I just have them laying on top of it so I can actually get an idea of what it does look like, so just keep that in mind. All right, so here's an example in Google SketchUp of my setup for my electric wheelchair motors, but this can really vary depending on the type of motors you go with. And as you can see, I'm just using two angle aluminum pieces. And in a second here, I'm gonna show you how I actually screwed those angle aluminum pieces onto the motors. But again, this can vary depending on the type of motors you go with. But most electric wheelchair motors are set up very similar. So in a way, let's go ahead and take a look at that image. All right, so here's just a snapshot of a test video I did about a year ago. But what's important here is you can see how I'm utilizing the screws on my motors to attach my two angle aluminum pieces. Hello guys and ladies, that does conclude this video. Now I just wanna take a break from editing video and say a couple of things before I end this particular video. If you find these videos interesting or helpful, a way that you can show me that is by liking a video or leaving comments below the particular video that you found interesting or helpful. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, or you can share with others that you think may find this particular video interesting. So any of those things or many more will actually show me that you guys appreciate all the time and effort that I'm putting into these videos and it also boosts my motivation to spend more effort and time with trying to make these more informative and trying to get them out on YouTube and on the web a lot quicker so with that said I will see you in the next video